Arkansas Today. Good afternoon, I'm Mallory Brooks. Thanks for watching Arkansas Today. North of Little Rock police say a man with a gun prompted two officers to shoot him this morning. Police say it all happened near Rimrock and Locust. That's where we find Arkansas Today's Hillary Hunt with the very latest. And Hillary, what do we know right now? Hey, Mallory, so North Little Rock police tell me it all started with an odd call that came in this morning. According to police, the man was walking up and down these streets with a handgun, making threats to people. That's when police arrived, and they tell me that he actually barricaded himself inside of this apartment that you see right behind me. Now, I want you guys to see the scene from a little bit earlier. Very different than what it looks like right now. There were cars, cops, and crime scene tape. They were all filling the streets. This all started happening around 7.30 this morning. Police say... They tried to get the man to come out of that apartment. When he did, on scene, officers say he pointed a gun directly at them. That's when they began to fire. Two of those officers fired at him, hitting him with bullets. Neighbors I spoke with say this is anything but normal for this neighborhood. And so they were like, just calm down. What are you so angry about? And so uh, I guess he just kind of rushed out. Because like when, when I turned around, they were like, put the gun down. They just start, they start shooting. I spoke with a number of neighbors just like Ryan who tell me the man's been acting a little weird lately. About three or four neighbors told me that. Now, according to police, he was transported to a local hospital. We haven't been updated on his condition at this moment. I have been told the two officers who fired their weapon at the incident this morning have been placed on paid administrative leave per officer protocol. Now, this is something we're going to continue to follow and have more on KRK News at 4. Mallory, back to you. Hillary, thank you. A stunning reversal by prosecutors in Chicago. The state is dropping all charges against Empire actor Jesse Smollett. He was charged with disorderly conduct, accused of staging a phony attack and claiming he was the victim of a hate crime. Smollett was in a criminal courthouse for an emergency hearing this morning. I want you to know that not for a moment was it in vain. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I have been accused of. It's unclear why the charges were dropped. Smollett's attorney released a statement saying Smollett was a victim who was vilified and made to appear as a perpetrator as a result of false and inappropriate remarks made to the public, causing an inappropriate rush to judgment. Cook County State's attorney also releasing a statement saying they believe the outcome is an appropriate resolution. Police are investigating multiple cases of teenagers with stolen guns, one ending in the death of a 15-year-old. Clarissa Bustamante has been tracking down the latest information on how these cases and law enforcement, they're trying to stop additional teen shootings from happening. Firearms will always have this mystique about them, and I think children are just naturally drawn to them. The curiosity kind of takes over young people. On February 25th, out of Prairie Grove Ace Hardware, four teenagers stole 75 guns. They've all been arrested and charged. Less than a month after the burglary, a 17-year-old took one of those guns to Harbor High School. Captain Jeff O'Brien with Prairie Grove PD confirms they've recovered 24 guns so far, leaving 51 still missing. Serial numbers have allowed police to track them down. Write down the serial number, the model, the make, maybe even a photograph of that firearm. Keep that not in the safe where the firearm was at but maybe in a second location. So if everything does get stolen, we can immediately get that into the system. In Van Buren on March 7th, a student took a stolen gun to the Coleman Freshman Academy to give to another student. Three students have been arrested for both theft by receiving and possession of a weapon. Sergeant Jonathan Ware with the Van Buren Police Department says warrants have now been filed against additional students involved with the stolen gun, including one related to residential burglary and breaking and entering a vehicle. When firearms are stolen, police say they can work with other agencies like the FBI to track them down quickly. Anytime you have good communication between departments, it helps everyone, the victim of the theft or the crime, and also it helps us uh, track down the suspect. In Elkins, multiple cars were broken into and six guns were stolen overnight three days ago. Elkins Police Chief Brian Watts says it happened between 12.30 a.m. and 1.30 in the afternoon. Police believe the suspects were just walking through the neighborhood checking for unlocked cars. Anytime you leave your gun or any type of valuable in your, your vehicle, you're leaving it open to any type of thief to come in. The same day those guns were stolen from Elkins, a 17-year-old accidentally shot a 15-year-old using what police say was one of those stolen guns. 
The teen accused of firing the deadly shot has been charged with manslaughter and theft by receiving. And police say stolen guns are frequently sold in person with cash leaving no trail for investigators to follow. The federal ban on semi-automatic rifle bump stocks goes into effect today. Under that ban, it is illegal to own, buy, or sell a bump stock, which they are used to turn a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic rifle, much like a machine gun. In December, Justice Department officials issued the ban, giving owners 90 days to either turn bump stocks over to federal agents or melt, shred, or crush them. Failure to destroy or turn a bump stock can result in a felony charge. Bump stocks became infamous after the device was linked to the Las Vegas concert massacre in October of 2017. Two gun rights groups have filed papers with the U.S. Supreme Court to try and halt the ban until federal appeals courts have ruled on the policy. A social media thread made Sunday left parents and Rogers worried for their child's safety at school. A Snapchat post told Oakdale Middle School students to not go to school on Tuesday, March 26, because there would be a shooting. A student saw the post and reported it to their parents, who turned it over to Rogers Police. The student responsible for the threat was arrested. Rogers Police say they are very, there are very serious consequences for people who make false claims, including criminal charges and expulsion. Think about the disruption it's going to cause at home with your family because now your parents are going to find new ways or alternative methods for you to get your education. Foster says if you see a threat like this, make sure to contact police right away. And police in central Arkansas say a six-year-old child used a disconnected cell phone to call 911 and falsely report that several people had been shot at an elementary school. Conway police saying they got the 911 call. From a, quote, young caller who said someone was shooting up Marguerite Van Elementary School. The caller said five people had been shot and the shooter was in the principal's office. This all happened around 5.30 after school hours. The call was found to be fake after a search of the school came up empty. We're told the 911 operator stayed on the phone with the six-year-old boy, but the story was continually changing. A warning for parents. Police say all disconnected cell phones are capable of calling 911 in the event of an emergency. In this case, we're told the parents were at home with the child, but they didn't know the phone could make such a call. If the phone has power, it will be able to make calls, so be sure to keep old and unused phones out of the reach of children. The Arkansas Board of Education takes control of an eastern Arkansas school district. Lee County District and Lee County High School is on probation for violating state certification standards that required upkeep of student records for graduation. State Department of Education officials telling the board that the district breached state standards by not maintaining correct up-to-date transcripts for its students. Officials also noted that parents and students weren't given proper guidance to schedule the course credits that are needed to graduate. Well, coming up, the Diamond Hogs are red hot. Five and